I'd like to second the motion. Uh, Grimaga Thordvair, um, I just want to read my motion into the record that Dublin City Council establish uh, Dublin City as a dementia inclusive city so as to enable people living with dementia to enjoy a better quality of life in our city. I suppose Ardvair, the, the motion speaks for itself. Um, my concern uh, is for people living with dementia as well as their carers. The disease can lead people to be very isolated in their own communities and it's also a disease that carries a stigma. It brings sadness for the person with dementia and it can also lead to a sense of isolation of loved ones caring for the person who's at home living with dementia. People and their carers say that work colleagues, friends, neighbours often stop engaging with them because they don't know how to deal with the disease. They feel very, very uncomfortable with the disease. And they just really, really don't know how to deal with it, which leads to people who have dementia trying to cover it up and you know, hide the fact that uh, they are uh, living with it. Um, there are measures or there that we can take as a local authority in our everyday lives to make life less painful for people living with dementia. I believe as a society we need to normalise the disease to help break the stigma through actions around awareness of what dementia is and how it impacts on people's lives. Um, this evening I'm asking the Chief Executive um, who has been supportive in previous efforts that I've made around this issue, such as the Dementia Inclusive Tea Dance Tunes, which Dublin City Council supports in the National Concert Hall. But I want to also ask if he will agree, as, as a start uh, to this motion, uh, to agree to facilitate the provision of dementia awareness training amongst all of the staff in Dublin City Council in conjunction with the Alzheimer's Society. I'm particularly referring to staff who are operating on the front line, people who are out in our area offices uh, and people who are in the housing department, anywhere where the, pe where the City Council staff are dealing with people face to face, I believe that those individuals uh, should be uh, given an opportunity to be trained in dementia awareness. I've spoken with the Alzheimer's Society and they would be more than happy to collaborate with the City Council uh, to provide this training. Um, separately, Chair, or, or there, in my capacity as Chair of the Economic, uh, strategic, uh, the Economic um, Enterprise uh, Strategic Policy Committee, I have been working with the Secretariat and the Alzheimer's Society uh, to bring about a project uh, to and convince Irish businesses that doing this kind of thing, raising, demand, raising awareness around this disease, is a very, very positive social, economic um, action. And we successfully have begun a pilot project in Super Value in Rohini, sorry, Orver, in Super Value in, in Rohini last uh, Wednesday, where this project hopefully will, um, I suppose, be attractive to other businesses throughout the city. Uh, I, 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 uh, I propose the motion, Arvara Gormagat. Gormagat Gormagat, Councillor Costello, and we agree that we give one minute to each reply on this this evening. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And I think, given the fact that the current government have failed to implement the National Dementia Strategy, it's up to us as a city council to take the mantle in relation to this. A huge number of our citizens in this city will be affected by dementia in the coming generations. And more and more as, the, as, as society gets older, we're going to see this firsthand in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, I know what it's like firsthand to have somebody in my home with dementia and how much of a strain that can put on the family and can put on, on loved ones. And it is important, as Councillor Heaney has pointed out, that we have a society that is accessible to both people with dementia and their carers, and that they can access um, both services and social amenities t together to, to live their lives to the full. Um, in St James's Hospital recently, when I started work there, they have this uh, programme called the DEMPATH course, which they run for new members of staff to raise awareness in relation to dementia on the front line and how to recognise somebody who's sitting there panicked um, at their wit's end, stressed out as they may have dementia, and how to go about approaching those people in our offices and on the front line. So I'd support Councillor Heaney's call for some type of a programme to enable our staff to recognise people and help them on the front line. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Gormagod, Corlor, Crianney, Dalek. Gormagod, I don't know if there was a second or if there wasn't, I would like to second. There is, OK. Um, I actually think this is a very worthwhile motion. Um, we've just finished celebrating um, Social Inclusion Week. And if we are to be a city that actually supports social inclusion, 
this is the kind of motion that we need to be passing and supporting. Um, we need to make this city accessible, inclusive, welcoming and supportive to those affected by dementia, enabling them to contribute and participate in society to, to their fullest ability. Um, making Ballyockley um, a city uh, where people with dementia are understood, respected, supported and confident that they contribute to community life is very important and this motion goes a long way to addressing that. Uh, we, we are an age-friendly city as well. We were able to do that, so I'm sure we can put in place uh, the supports that are needed to ensure that uh, Councillor Heaney's motion uh, gets carried through. I know that in York and Bradford in England, they are among the leaders in the field of this. And um, I have more, but I'll, I'll take my minute. Gormaga, stand. Gormaga, Corlor, Councillor Kelly. Gormaga, Lord Vera, and uh, I want to... I commend the, the councillor for putting this, this motion forward. Um, it's been on the declare for a long, long time. And um, while it hadn't affected me or my family, or I had thought uh, dementia, I was at a, my brother's wedding in Essex um, in August, only to discover, well, I had, I had been aware, but only to meet my uncle, who was suffering from dementia, and managed to spend a good two hours over the weekend with him. Um, and I got a much better understanding of what my aunt has to go through as his full-time carer. So I am looking forward to the manager's report and, and looking forward to, to supporting any initiative that could be brought forward in, in this council and support Councillor Heaney in, in all of her endeavours. Gormagot. Gormagot, Corlor O'Moore. Yeah, Gormagot, I think it's one of the better motions that's been before this council in quite a while. It's very, very important to Mencia and for people to know how to deal with it. And that's why Councillor Heaney highlighted uh, uh, Super Value in Rohini during the week. They did an excellent job. They sent their staff off training and they're going to run a two hour shopping a week for people with dementia. I think it's a very innovative idea within Dublin. It's been done quite a lot outside the city, but it's excellent for people with dementia and the staff are trained up and would like to see some of the DCC staff trained up to deal with it also. And Gormagot, Councillor Heaney, for putting it forward. Gormagot, Councillor Boylan. My good Lord Mayor. Um, I just want to commend Councillor Heaney's motion and I fully support it. Um, obviously, people and the carers who um, are living with dementia um, deserve to have as much a happy life as they can. Life for the patient and the carer dealing with this disease can be very difficult and isolating. Um, and our city is for all our citizens, so anything that we can do as a council um, to ease those burdens is, is a good step as far as I can see. Um, of course, we need to uh, normalise and, and help break the stigma that is is surrounding this disease um, and one of those uh, ways to do that is the suggestion from Councillor Heaney in our motion to facilitate training for council staff um, that deal with people directly but I, um, I, if there's going to be training for council staff I would like to put myself forward as a councillor to receive some of that training as well because obviously we in our job as councillors deal with people on a, on a day to day basis and, and directly so I think that that's something we should definitely do and it should be rolled out across the, um, the organisation. Gormaigot. Sorry Gormaigot, uh, Councillor McHugh and there is a quorum. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord Mayor. I suppose uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. There's nobody, uh, nobody that's not touched by it. It's so prevalent at the moment. Uh, to, to my own family, uh, I'm suffering with it. And as well, I say suffering. I think the, 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 the patients themselves actually go into a world of their own, and it's the family that are left behind to have lost them. And that's the sadness of it. And I know the Brennan brothers, I think, launched a, a, a small village down in some part of Limerick where, 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 they, where they've uh, the, the, uh, dementia village that is set up. And there's, a, there's one actually uh, in, in the Netherlands, the Hedgeway village, which has everything. It's post office, it's, it's uh, entertainment, and they can live in their own environment there. And uh, they're secure, and it gives them some dignity, if you like, and it helps the family. So I'm 100% behind this motion, and I'm delighted that uh, Deputy Heaney brought it forward, or not Deputy, oh, 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 oh that's, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Councillor Heaney, thank you. I didn't know you could see into the future, Councillor McHugh. Um, Councillor Kennedy. 
thank you very much, Lord Mayor. And yeah, I hope uh, Councillor McHugh is vindicated in that prediction there. Um, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to contribute on this because um, my own father did pass away five years ago from a neurodegenerative disease. And I've, I think one of the first times I met Councillor Heaney, I discussed this issue with her. And what I think she deserves to be commended for is not only this motion, but because this is an issue that she has worked on persistently and continuously for many, many years. And certainly, I enthusiastically support her tonight. Uh, Gordon Margaret, uh, Councillor Theresa Keegan. Yeah, I, thank you, Deirdre. I know I've spoken to you privately about this, and I think it's a fantastic uh, initiative for Dublin City Council to endorse it. And um, a lot of people are under the idea that dementia only happens to elderly people. Like, people in their 30s and 40s, I know, have dementia. And it's very, very important that all people in all walks of life know that somebody as young as my daughters could be walking around with dementia. And it's very, very important that people understand that. And there to thank you again for bringing this forward. I'm all good. Councillor Larry O'Toole. Thanks, Lord Mayor, and thanks, uh, Deirdre, for bringing this motion. I fully support it. Uh, and, and Theresa, there very uh, clearly, like, I say, you know, it's not, you don't always see. If I break my leg, I'll see it. But dementia is a different thing altogether. Uh, 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 manager, just to support the motion, uh, our own excellent community staff, community staff in our areas, I think, could be supplemented, you know, uh, increased to maybe support local community stuff. Like, I'll just give you one example, a walking football exercise uh, where people with dementia, mild enough maybe, are, but there's, that means they're participating in the community. And not to be flippant, uh, when, when Ray talks about uh, dementia villages with post offices, if this Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael mm. government could pursue their, their policy of closing post office, I wish them luck with that. Gordon Margot, uh, the Chief Executive wants to come in. Before I let Councillor Heaney back in, before we take a vote on that. Uh, Lord Mayor, thank you. Uh, yes, the Executive will be very well disposed towards uh, the sentiments in this motion. In, in my re reply here, which I'm not going to read out, but it does list a number of... Um, dementia-related programmes have been piloted in different areas, many at the uh, urging of Councillor Heaney herself. Um, the particular request that we would um, provide dementia awareness training, uh, I'd be very happy to agree to that and to organise that for relevant frontline staff. So I, I, I give a commitment to do that. I'd be happy to extend that to elected members of the Council as well. So I, I would see us, under the Age Friendly Programme, continuing to roll, run out different initiatives on an area basis uh, and to implement a programme of awareness training for, for relevant staff and for elected members who are interested. Gordon Margot, I'm going to let uh, Councillor Healy back, back in, but just to thank the manager for that very, very positive reply. And this is where sometimes we don't think we're getting stuff done, but in fact, with this motion, and we have to commend Councillor Heaney for this and, and the manager's reply. I'll let Councillor Heaney back in again. Well, thanks, Art Fair, and thanks, manager, and thanks to all the, 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 the contributors. I'd just like to go back to something that uh, Councillor Theresa Keegan mentioned, and that is that it's not a normal part of ageing. Dementia is a normal part of our lives. There are, there are members of staff of Dublin City Council who could be working in city civic offices and in our buildings throughout the city who are living with dementia and who are covering it up themselves. So it's not the normal part of ageing, it's the normal part of our lives. Gormila Is that motion agreed? Um, motion number two is uh, Councillor Hazel de Nortoon, who isn't well and has asked that the members uh, would agree to uh, have her motion deferred until next month, and I'd recommend that. Is that agreed? Um, motion number three, Councillor Andrew Keegan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, the genesis of this, this motion, um, as a construction worker, uh, you know, I, I see it firsthand, uh, the exploitation of, of workers working on, on building sites, building offices, building reforms for shops and, and houses. Uh, the 
genesis of it, it came from a presentation made by the, by the manager on the, the depot that's going to be built in Ballymun. Ideally, I would want that depot in Ballymun to employ local labour, to employ directly a uh, local labour and employ proper uh, contractors who pay uh, you know, their, their staff properly. So really, essentially, the, the, the scourge of the, the construction industry is where workers are deemed to be self-employed. Um, they get a, a slightly higher rate than the average rate, but they're, they're denied benefits, including pension. So what I would want, that any contract that the management uh, uh, you know, are involved in in relation to procurement or whatever, that they would employ companies that employ properly uh, uh, like, 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 uh, proper uh, P45 pay tax and have the, the benefits to go with that. Um, the answer, and the reason for, again uh, for putting forward this motion, the answer for, from the manager wasn't satisfactory as far as I'm concerned. He's made all excuses about procurement, or we have procurement this, pro procurement that. Now, uh, procurement to me is an excuse that uh, we'll have a race to the bottom. And as far as I'm concerned, if we're going to have any projects uh, which, such as the depot, super depot, or whatever you want to call it, in Ballymun. Any projects, the Dublin City Council is going to be involved in, whether it's housing or offices, uh, I think we should set the standard as far as construction is concerned. At the moment, we have uh, an SEO, uh, a, sector, a sectorial uh, payment to uh, the workers. They have, a, they have a set rates now, and uh, all them rates for the different trades, uh, grain drivers or whatever, is being ignored. Now, I want to, you know, I, I want Dublin City Council to abide by the standards, higher standards than what's out there at the moment. And that's the reason for this motion. Thank you. Uh, Gordon Margot, uh, some people want to come in on that. Councillor Jackson. Lord Mayor, I'd like to second this motion here today, if that's all right with Councillor Keegan. Can I just say that all too often, a lot of the bogus, what I will call contractors, that seem to go into liquidation, etc., they have one unique feature that they're all in the business of hiving off all the parts of the contract out there to subcontractors. Nobody knows who's paying tax. And I know that from my role in one of the bodies that I'm uh, appointed to from here. I was able to tell the board of the ETB at one stage a couple of years ago, uh, when there was no employment in this state, uh, that I see the northern painters there. And they said, oh, no, we gave that contract to a Dublin painter. Well, I said, they're all there from Dungannon. They're at the side of the college today. I'm looking at them today. And that happens all across the board. And it's quite evident that monies like this, that most money in the construction industry stays in the jurisdiction of the state. It, pays people buy stuff in shops and cafes and pubs, etc. So when a lot of money like this goes through the black economy, it leaves, whether it be leaves the state or it leaves, it doesn't find its way into the revenue commissioners in any shape or form. So I think if you have a contract with a contractor, it's their job to ensure that the people on the site get the proper conditions and all. If they're not prepared to adhere to that, they shouldn't be getting contracts. Thanks, Lord. My good councillor Dunn. Lord Mayor, this motion not only makes sense to those who are working on the construction sites, but it makes sense from a, a, an overall financial position, as uh, Councillor Jackson outlined there. Because what we're losing in terms of PAYA, U universal social charge, and all of those payments that will be made by workers that will go directly back into the revenue is being lost because of, of this practice of subcontracting. And as Councillor Jackson said, most of them are registered outside of the state across that border that we have between here and the six counties. Uh, there was a site uh, in Dublin Airport when they were de de developing it, in, and that's not too long ago, the Terminal 2, in order to get onto that site, you had to have a union card. You had to have this, uh, the, um, the subcontractor had to provide a statement that all pensions were paid up to date, that everybody was uh, uh, in line with the legislation. We need to get back to that, and our tendering process should ensure that everybody who is successful in getting a contract from Dublin City Council com fully complies with that legislation. Good Councillor McGrattan. Uh, I would agree with the motion and, and commend uh, the Council for putting it down. I, I would agree with the previous speakers uh, that the current tendering process just creates a, a race to the bottom and it, it's not going to. I, I, I haven't seen the, council, the, the manager's reply, but I, I can understand uh, what's in it. But even if, even if we can't change it, can we write to the relevant body and, and put this? Because th this is the view of the Council uh, and, and can we put that to, to the relevant powers? Uh, Councillor Jackson uh, speaks about. Uh, 
workers from Dungan and uh, not paying tax. My party has a good idea where people from Dungan could, could pay tax here, so you might support that motion. <laughs> well, uh, Councillor Lacey. Uh, Lord Mayor, it really has all been said. Uh, I su support the motion in full. Uh, workers are entitled to decent standards of living and decent standards of pay. I think it's a it's something that Dublin City Council should be leading the way on. Uh, we had good records in the past, and if the manager, you know, does see difficulties with implementing <coughs> implementing such a motion, uh, perhaps he could come back to us with detailed report on where we can't implement it or why we can't implement it. But I think this is a principle that, as far as humanly possible, this council should stand over. Uh, we shouldn't be giving money to shysters and people who aren't paying people uh, proper wages and proper working conditions. So I fully, uh, fully support the motion and commend Councillor Keegan for tabling it. Gormagot, Councillor Doolan. Gormagot, Tarn Vera. I think it, I, I commend Councillor Andrew Keegan for bringing in this motion. I think it's very pertinent. It's very relevant to some of the debates we've had around housing and some of the what's gone on in some of the sites. Unfortunately, as we look around the chamber, there is besides our own group who have 12 councillors here, there's 14 councillors present other outside our group. I think that's a travesty and reflects really poorly. On, on the councils who, who, who are absent. I'm sure many of them for genuine reasons, but I think those of us who have given up other events to, to be here, I think the debate is a really, really important issue. Many times we have debates here on policies agreed uh, that re remains in a bubble. This doesn't. This impacts on people's lives, their health, their safety, their income, and the communities that we hope to build in. I mean, look at the, look at the debates earlier on on some of the sites uh, where builders have gone, have gone into receivership. Many of the companies have been, that are badly hit by, by that, that company have gone into receivership are subcontractors. I've been contacted by people who have installed kitchens in some of those sites, and not one single kitchen was paid for by that company. Uh, and th that company, who was subcontracted to install the kitchens, are now facing financial difficulty. So I think this motion is very pertinent. It has a very immediate impact. And I, I would also uh, commend to the, the, the Chief Executive to come back with a detailed reason how we can implement it or why we cannot implement it, and what are the obstacles so we can overcome them and work together to make this, this motion reality and to improve the quality on, on the building sites, both health, safety and, and financially wise. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kathleen Carney Bood. Um, just to um, commend the motion, um, I want to wholeheartedly agree with it. I think, in part, it complements my own motion, number eight on the CLAR, the second part, um, which says that um, this type of practice um, is not what the Council should be supporting um, in terms of the employment um, or um, self-employment uh, the practice that goes on uh, with subcontractors. Um, it just struck me how prevalent this is, uh, this kind of practice. Um, a couple of years ago, I was on a board, uh, the CDETB, and I was interviewing over the course of two days a, a huge number of candidates for a porter's job, and at least a third of those candidates, per, you know, these people coming to us for a job for a porter had huge skills within the building industry, but really all they wanted was a full-time job that was reliable and secure, and that just really highlighted that for me. Gurma Hugger. I've got uh, Councillor Perry. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to support uh, Councillor Keegan's motion as well, an extremely important motion. Um, but state bodies like Dublin City Council should be setting the standards for the, uh, for the industry. Um, as Andrew has already said, bogus self-employment is absolutely destroying the current terms and conditions in the construction industry. And the whole race to the bottom affects us all, not, not just the people directly employed by the low wages, it affects us them all. Councillor Dunn has made the point about the financial benefits accruing to the local economy by a proper, decent living, work and wage. So, uh, Congratulations to uh, Andrew for putting the uh, issue on the agenda, and I look forward to the response from the manager. And hopefully, we can properly look at uh, implementing the, the content of the motion. Gormagut. Councillor Moore. 
Yeah, thanks a lot. I'd like to compliment Andrew Keegan too, also for the motion. It's vitally important that this motion comes up at this particular time because the construction industry is actually starting to pick up and recruit people. They can't get the Irish trained people because the majority of decent Irish trained people couldn't get a decent wage here. I went to Australia, England, America and everywhere else. And an awful lot of the construction people coming in now are non-nationals. But these non-nationals, they're coming in to work in this country and they have to be looked after as well as the national and it's imperative that we look after the non-nationals coming in and by having them in trade unions and paying them trade union rates and making sure they have their p45 on a daily basis the whole lot it's imperative that we do this for the sake of our own pride and the people coming in to work in the country I just want to bring up the point as well that it, we spend a lot of time on working on social inclusion causes for our tendering process, but they're null and void when, they're, when it comes to the fact that there's subcontractors and, and bogus contractors working on site. Therefore, we actually can't give the, the benefits to the local communities because the, the jobs aren't there. Gormagad. Gormagad, Councillor Heaney. I fully, I and my party fully support this motion. Um, the the um, the the councillor uh, councillor Keegan is to be com complimented for putting the motion on the floor. Um, bogus self-employment only leads, as councillor Lacey has said, to depriving workers of their employment rights of things like holiday pay and sick pay. Um, and I, f I I fully support the motion and welcome it. Gormagot Ardvar. Gormagot, councillor Tool. Our Mayor fully support the motion and thanks Dr Keegan for bringing it here. I think it's very relevant, as someone earlier said, with the increase now in, in uh, construction work. Uh, we, as the, as the biggest local authority, must set, be in the lead of setting standards. Uh, believe it or not, we worked on building sites in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> straight, straight, straight away, uh, unionised. P45 or whatever the equivalent was at the time, uh, tax, all of that. I remember going on a site and on the Saturday morning then I went into Parnell Square and signed up for the Workers' Union of Ireland. And that's how set up it was. And by, 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 what, by not having those standards, we are also, the workman, I would say the work has, uh, the standard of the work has in some cases uh, decreased because of that, that, that kind of uh, loose way we have now. So I think it's a very good motion and the council must certainly do whatever it can to, to carry out the, the, the words of the motion. Uh, Gordon Margaret, before I let Councillor Keegan back in, just let the Chief Executive in, or the Manager in. Uh, thanks, Advera. Um, just in terms of, of the motion, just to, to understand, there is, um, as we've said before, there is a legal obligation for <coughs> Dublin City Council in terms of the tender documents and procurement arrangements that we issue in these circumstances, and we're obliged to meet them, and we do. And what that involves is that in the tender documents, there are conditions that require contractors to meet all the civil and union and labour law requirements. Um, Beyond that, in terms of the, um, the con consequences that the motion set out, um, there's, we're certainly sympathetic to those circumstances that are there, but just to say that they, the use of some contractors are not illegal, they are provided for in law. Um, in that context, it may be that we can write to the department to set out what we're all trying to move to, but it's not a question that we're not um, meeting our current obligations, we're obliged to structure things in the way we're doing. So perhaps it's uh, that we can commence the process of engaging with the department to move the agenda where the uh, motion is, is looking to get to. I'm going to let Councillor Costello in for a very short question. Yeah. Do, do, um, sorry, Cathy, do, during the pre-tender phase in any big project, you're able to rule out tender bidders or potential tender bidders based on the, turn, the turnover of the company or insurance indemnities and things that they have in place. Surely that, that condition can be extended to subcontractors that they may want to employ to ensure that we're going to receive some type of continuity throughout the whole project. And I, I know other organisations have looked at that in the past. I'm just wondering if you could look at that or if, if you've already looked at it, could you comment on it? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Would you like to comment on that, Manager, before I... Councillor Dunn has... Is this, is this a question, Councillor Dunn, or a comment? Uh, maybe we'll just... You're going to reply to your own question? If I could remember my question, I'd reply to it, Lord Mayor. 
but this is a question to the manager. Uh, I have no doubt, uh, as you said in the reply, uh, manager, that when we tender out, that we ask that everything would be done in to comply with legislation and in terms of employment and all of that. But what do we do after somebody gets a contract to ensure that they're not using bogus uh, uh, self-employment as a, as a way of increasing their profit on that particular site? Because it does happen. OK, I'll let the manager back in. To take two things, in terms of Councillor Costello's question, um, Article 71 uh, references that subcontractors have to have the same standards as contractors. I can give you a more detailed report rather than get into that here. In terms of Councillor Dunn's question, there is a system of monitoring of contracts that's operated out of the HR department which looks at contracts, but that just that relates to contracts that we previously provided by direct labour. So there is a system of monitoring of some contracts that's operated and we might look at that again. Uh, Councillor Keegan, I'll let you back in briefly. Yeah, um, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, the, the, the clearest thing I see, and uh, Councillor Dunn picked up on it, is that uh, management uh, says, well, we'll tick all these boxes and everything is, everything is hunky-dory, but what goes on behind the scene is never tackled with the exploitation, the, the rip-off of, of, of workers. Now, we're not saying uh, Dublin City Council are... Uh, you, know, uh, you know, involved in anything nefarious. But what actually happens, the way the whole thing is set up, there is actually no uh, control or no safeguard for the workers behind the scene uh, who work for subbies, no matter where they come from, uh, no matter where the subcontractors or the workers come from. So really, I would like a more in-depth you know, approach and say, well, OK, we're going to build a, a, a certain structure but uh, we're going to go right down the line to make sure everything is, is above board. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm, I'm not sad, I got the same answer from the manager tonight as I did from the manager who gave us the presentation the last time in the, in the North West area. But, not surprising, but what I want to hear from the management in, in the next couple of months is that they've approached the department in relation to procurement and we can have changes and safeguards for workers' rights. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Councillor Keegan. Um, now, Councillor uh, Feeney did approach me before she had to leave, and it was a personal matter, so I'm quite happy to recommend we defer that motion. It, it wasn't that she was just disappearing like the rest, uh, like other people. That brings me on to my motion. I'm quite happy to have that, not talk on that motion, if it can be agreed, unless... Uh, Lord Mayor, could I just ask one thing, uh, just about your motion. Local government played a huge role in the struggle for independence. It wasn't true, you know, military might, but it was through the operation of the local government, the councils around the country refusing to recognise the, the British Parliament and so forth. And I just wonder if we could ensure that in this period of, of celebrations or commemorations that we acknowledge the role of our predecessors in standing up for an independent state. Absolutely, yeah, Councillor so in, in response, I, I totally agree. I think Dermot Lacey has been a, clearly advocated there, the ballot box in one hand and the arm light in the other. I think that is how the, the War of Independence yeah. has won. Councillor Doolan should uh, misrepresent my views. Can we? Uh, <laughs> I, I certainly think there was a, there was a need that, for such activities to secure the state. I don't think those activities I don't think we need a discussion. Since. Agreed. Go Okay, Councillor Jackson seconded that motion and uh, Councillor Costello. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And it's, it, you know, this motion has been on the agenda quite a while and I wasn't expecting it to be reached tonight, but I'm happy it has. Um, last week at the House meeting, we discussed a queue of projects forming, um, which I think the House manager said it was, was non existent. But nonetheless, this is a project that um, went out for community consultation over a year and a half ago now. Uh, the community got together, they put together the liaison group. We brought together a proposal which gave a skeleton of the type of the development the community would like to see on this site. And the development project has all but died away at the minute in, in, in the minds of the community and the councillors in the local area. And what I'm calling on manager is that we put some emphasis back on this project again by the passing of this motion. It's, it's not good enough that we sit for a year um, w without guaranteeing the certainty from the Office of Public Works in relation to the covenant that's on the land, which, which may or may not have prohibited us from um, dealing with houses. But there were, there were a number of steps identified during the process 
um, which needed to be actioned and which should have been actioned by now, which we haven't seen any results on. I don't see why we can't go out and get an architectural firm to do a design and build contract on this and, and try and get the thing moving. We don't need to micromanage the, the, the project in, in the housing department. We need to get somebody who can actually take action. We need to get the funding secured from the, from the um, customs house and we need it done ASAP because the people of Finglas need houses, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Lord Margaret, Councillor Pat Dunn. Uh, Lord Mayor, not, not being from the area, and I'm vaguely uh, familiar with the Abbey Girls uh, Centre, so I don't want to get into the detail uh, of that, but any motion that comes before this Council in relate, relation to the development of a site, I'm going to propose that the wording will always be public housing. Right. Uh, and, and if this motion, I would like to pro uh, propose an amendment to take out the, uh, social and affordable homes and put in the word public housing. Councillor Andrew Keegan. Yeah, um, actually, that was uh, one of the points. There's two, I have two points on it, but one of the points is certainly public housing. Socially affordable housing means privatisation of that site. It's quite a large site, an extensive site. But the point I want to, uh, another point that's kind of missing from it is that uh, the provision of uh, you know, facilities for the community. And uh, you know, also there's an Abigail Centre there. There's, there's women in, in there under stress, under long-term homeless uh, provision, and uh, there's no mention of you know what approach that should be taken with that. Where, like, should they be included in, in the housing uh, that, that's to be built there? But I would want an amendment of the wording. Uh, I can't support it if it doesn't say public housing. Also, thanks. Uh, Councillor Conahan. Well, Margaret, I'd just like to second the motion if no one else has there. Um, Getting caught up in semantics of this social housing, public housing, I don't think it's helping anyone. I think people seem to think that social housing is a bad thing and we should change the name. Well, if we do that in 20 years' time, people will be saying, oh, let's change the name public housing because people have an issue with it. There's no issue with social housing. Um, so I don't, I don't think David's going to accept the amendment. If he does, that's up to him. But just in relation to the site, um, from what we're told at the housing SPC, it's moving. There's a design team in, in place. So David had a go at us at my comment earlier, saying that you know this, it's a disgrace of what's going on. But I'd just like to remind him of 1997 to 2011, when there was plenty of time to sort out housing, when nothing was done. Social housing bills were stopped, and we're, we are where we are today. But in saying that, I support David's uh, efforts in. Bringing and uh, housing into the Finglas and to the Abigail site. So, thanks very much. Oh, sorry, and just to, on Andrew Keegan's point, there is a plan with the Abigail Centre. Um, Brendan has agreed to detenant that, so it's not like they're, they're being thrown out on, on the street. And that was um, backed by all councillors and known at many's a meeting that we weren't in favour of just closing this centre and leaving people on the street. There was a plan put in place. It's been going on for years. There's been updates at the Northwest Area Committee on regular occasions. Thanks very much, Chair. Come on, good. Councillor Theresa Keegan. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, I agree <coughs> completely with David, and um, I was going to bring up the point that Anthony said about the homeless people in the Abigail Centre, and they, um, Anthony has said what's happening. Uh, there's 15 acres of land here, and I think it's about time that something good happened in the Finglas area, uh, it, because we need social houses, but we also need affordable houses. I mean, people think there is a certain number of people that needs affordable houses. People are not going to get mortgages, and they're not going to be able to buy a house unless we build affordable houses. So if David agrees with it, I think affordable should be left in in that. And I think it's a very good um, time to start the Abigail Centre because it has got nothing but a bad name since the homeless people went in there. And it's time that we acted on it and started to build houses there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Tina McVeigh. Thanks, Lord Farrer. I'm just gobsmacked that we spent the first uh, good while of this meeting lauding the benefits of uh, cost rental and how it was the most progressive 
uh, housing policy that we've had today, everybody in the chamber rightly uh, supporting it and saying how fantastic it was, and now we're back to semantics. And it, words are important, and semantics are important. And here's the difference between social and affordable and public housing, because in social and affordable, there's, a, there's an understanding that the affordable element is based on, on the private market, which means selling off the land. And the land being the most expensive part of the transaction, then is what makes the private part of the transaction unaffordable, because as land prices soar, the private houses soar, and they become increasingly unaffordable. And we're seeing that at the moment, in, in, in the height of this housing crisis, where people can't afford the private sector. So why on earth would we be advocating the introduction of any private accommodation on public land? And just to remind people of the motion that we passed last week and that the Fianna Fáil members were scrambling to add their names to it. It included in the motion a call on government to dramatically increase the supply of public affordable housing, including publicly provided cost rental housing. So I don't see any difficulty with including uh, the, the amendment as proposed by, by Councillor Dunn. And the last point was hold a referendum to enshrine the right to public housing in the Constitution. So if they're going to put their money where their mouth is and they weren't just posturing last week in supporting the, 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 the motion in the special meeting, they'll accept the amendment and they'll vote in favour of the Dáil motion this Wednesday as well. Uh, Councillor Ryan. Thanks very much. Um, I have no problem in a wording being selected that makes it clear that what we're calling for is mixed income housing, um, but I don't believe that private pur for purchase affordable housing has ever served the state well. Um, it, it requires large subsidies, which mean that it's not possible for us to um, fund um, public housing, and um, it's, it's only ever affordable as a percentage of market rate. So, um, for example, we now have the ludicrous situation where affordable affordable purchase housing is going to be for sale at rates that are only affordable to people earning double the average wage. Um, and I have a number of friends who bought so-called affordable houses um, during the Celtic Tiger and are still in negative equity because the price of their houses dropped so far below the market rate of um, equivalent houses. So um, similar to others, I'm happy to support the motion um, if it is clarified that the affordable housing in the motion will be um, available for people on middle incomes but um, will remain in public ownership and rented to, to, to people. Going my God, Councillor Perry. Thanks, Lord Verde. Um, I'd like to support the call for the site to be exclusively public housing. Um, um, I won't repeat what Councillor McVeigh has said. She said it very eloquently what I would have liked to have said. Uh, the difference between um, social and affordable and public housing and uh, and i think we have to acknowledge there is a problem with social housing and that the problem is that it's not mixed income because of government policy they forced social housing to no longer be mink, mixed income like it was when they built the likes of Ballyferma, Cabra and the like and other estates which were genuinely mixed income. We need to return to that and we, if we have public land it's an opportunity and again as Councillor McVeigh says I think the proposal for the cost rental providing its reasonable ra uh, rates of rent is a, an absolute game changer an absolute game changer i think it will ensure mixed income housing so i would uh, support uh, councillor Dunn's uh, amendment good good councillor lacy lord mayor i grew up in a council house um, and i now live in a, an old city council house my parents bought the house from the council and I bought the house from the people who bought the house from uh, the council. Um, I think it's extraordinary hypocritical of me or any other councillor in this council who owns a house uh, to say that nobody else can own one, and that nobody else can own one on land that we collectively own as a society. You know, the state land isn't owned by one section or another section. It's owned by all of us. Uh, we have a duty not just to one sector of the housing, those in housing need, but to the entire community. Uh, who are in need of social and affordable housing. And I think narrowing this motion to one particular interpretation of public housing would be absolutely wrong. And I, indeed, I think it would be hypocritical. Um, we need a mixed type of housing development. And you know, the, the social and affordable model is, in my view, the best way. Uh, trying to, to steamroll everybody or uh, uh, horseshoe everybody into one particular type of housing is wrong. Uh, I support the motion as uh, outlined on the social and affordable side.
Uh, Gordon, Malco, that's everyone who speaks. I, I will let. Um, on, on a point of information, we haven't received any amendment in writing. Um, I'm going to suggest, uh, Councillor Coslo has suggested the following amendment where it says to provide social and affordable homes. We take out the words and affordable and input. Oh, uh, so, okay, I'll let you clarify it. I was going to say remove the word unaffordable and put in affordable, including cost rental. In all fairness, we need to get the amendment in writing. That's what's agreed, isn't it? Oh, well, I mean, in fairness, we didn't think we'd get this far down the uh, motion. So, so I mean, the rules it, don't we're, apply. We're removing, uh, just to clarify, Councillor Costa, we're removing two. What, what words are we removing? Words are we just putting in words? D David, can I, can I propose, I mean... Oh, let, no, let, let Councillor Coslow speak, he's just... I just Sorry, Lord Mayor, the, the proposal was simple. Um, it was to match the, the wording of the, the motion last week, and we said we've got social and affordable, and if we replace that with social and affordable, including cost rental. I think that way then it leaves it open for scope, because you've got to remember, we're so far down a process now where the community have agreed and backed a social housing project in Finglas, and we don't have any opposition to it under its current guise, and if we start changing that model now significantly and we get opposition to it, we're going to stymie the whole bloody lot of it. We might as well just throw my motion out as opposed to amend it, Lord so Mayor. So you want to insert three words, including cost rental after the word affordable? Yes, Lord Mayor. Okay. Um, I let the manager, the chief executive, come in. Uh, uh, Lord Mayor, we do recognise the urgency and importance attaching, attaching, to developing, the attaching to the development of these lands. A feasibility study has been prepared. We are in the process of procuring a design team. I think uh, it is worth pointing out that there are existing buildings occupied by homeless services and they will have to be relocated and that is not going to be easy. Councillor Dunn, you are going to suggest another amendment. I am not suggesting another amendment. I, I, I want to speak on the amendment that I put at the beginning of the debate. What, can you just clarify that yeah, amendment yeah, just so yeah. we all know exactly what yeah, we are talking we, about? We, and I am not going to let you speak to it, by the way. I'm not going to speak to Mayor. I just okay. want to clarify. Just tell me what your amendment, amendment is. Yeah. The amendment that I put at the beginning of the debate, and, 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 and I want to put as an amendment if I get yes. a second okay. further, is that uh, after the word provide, uh, to remove the word social and affordable homes, social and affordable, and put in public homes. Pub, sorry, uh, to remove the word social and affordable homes and put in the words public housing. So we have two amendments. Um, uh, you, have, you have only one amendment. One amendment. So we'll, what is well, Councillor Costlow's? Well, 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 I put my amendment first, Lord Bear. Oh, he's adding in words. Okay. So we go with the, we'll take a vote on the amendment first. Amendment, which just to be clarified, what Councillor Dunn said, we take out the words social and affordable homes and we put in public housing. Is that, that's it? that this Council acts to ensure that immediate development of the site currently housing the Abigail Centre, Finglas, to provide public housing to 250 plus families. That's his, that's his proposed amendment. So um, if you proceed to vote on that. Uh, that this, uh, the, okay, that the second amendment is Councillor Costello's to his own motion that this council acts to ensure the immediate development of the site currently housing the Abigail Centre Finglas to provide social affordable including cost rental homes to 250 plus families. Is that correct? Okay, so we put Councillor Dunn's amendment first. Well, we're, are we voting? Please, please you can vote, vote on that. Um. 
that's uh, the vote is stopped now. That amendment is defeated, uh, no 16, yes 9. So now we'll proceed to put Yeah. Uh, well, no, there was, well, there was no abstentions or no not voted, so you did vote. No, I didn't write it. Oh, not take it again? We can take it again. We can take it again. It was not. It was... It, was, no. it won't make it... Uh, well, it's... Does he want to add on his vote? I, I think in the interest of expediency, we won't. Larry, we... We, we won't vote again. It's it's sixteen nine. Councillor so O'Toole, that's okay. we can add on your vote. We can add on your vote manually. Your vote is that okay, Councillor O'Toole? We'll add on your vote manually, which is we need to know which way it is. Which way? You voted, yeah, yes. voted yes. Okay. okay. So that's sixteen to ten, but it's still oh, uh, yes, this <laughs> Uh, so now we go to put uh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Costello's amendment that this, and obviously if this is carried, the motion is carried, that this council acts to... Cunis, please. That this council acts to ensure the immediate development of the site currently housing the Abigail Centre Finglas to provide uh, social affordable, including cost rental homes to 250 plus families. Okay, we'll proceed to vote on that motion. Um, that vote, that, that uh, amendment is carried 21, four uh, against and one abstention. So that amendment is carried. So we, we, we are taking it that that motion is carried. Is that agreed? Agreed. Uh, just in relation to motion seven, which is Councillor Kennedy's motion, and in fairness to him, he brought it in eight months before the GDPR came into force, but it's now in force. So I think in out of regard for the length of time he's had to wait, I, could I suggest that we just defer that and he can put in an amended motion? I think we've agreed that. Close the meeting. Close the meeting. <laughs> Next motion, Councillor uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kathleen Carney Bold. I wasn't expecting to reach this motion tonight, um, but I suppose it's pretty straightforward that um, we should be looking at our budget to employ more full-time staff um, in the manually skilled and trade areas within housing maintenance. And one of the, the, the points I made about the earlier motion was that the, the un unsecured employment for workers um, of these subcontractors, particularly within the house and maintenance, is also an issue, and it's certainly not a practice we should be supporting. But also the issue around housing maintenance is um, that I find that many times uh, the use of contractors doesn't improve speed, it, uh, it doesn't improve reliability or accountability. And um, to be honest, I had hoped that I would receive a report through the the working group for the services delivery uh, by this stage, but we haven't actually had a meeting in the last couple of months, so um, I was hoping to have that report that I'd requested on the, the comparison of the costs for housing maintenance department in particular. So what would we be spending on contractors and how much in comparison would that cost if we were actually hiring direct labour and full-time staff who would be under better paying conditions and we'd have better accountability. So that was the idea behind the motion. Um, so I don't know if, if the manager or the CEO has um, an update on that re report that I requested. 
Um, so I'd like to put forward the motion um, and hope that you'll support it. Thanks. Corlar Michal McDonagh, and we need a seconder for the motion. Cormagat, I guess uh, uh, I would like to second the motion. Taki Imlesh and Ruin. I want to commend Councillor Carney Boo, the, the Lassard Vera, for putting the motion forward. Um, I, I not only does it highlight the uh, issue of uh, type of employment and, and the use of contractors and so on, but also the issue of maintenance, and um, I think it's something that needs to be uh, significantly upgraded. Uh, this is their council housing stock. We don't have enough of it, obviously, um, but that that we have, we need to uh, maintain to the highest standard, because it's not just for those who are uh, tenants now, but who will be in the future. And uh, as we know, many tenants face long delays in uh, repairs and so on, uh, maintenance issues that, were, that are brought to all of us. And there's no reason why that can't be uh, significantly upgraded. And uh, I think that's what the motion is trying to do, as well as ensure that uh, there is direct employment and uh, decent employment. Good morning, Councillor uh, Councillor Perry. Thanks, Aaron. Very like to support this motion as well. And rather than repeat what's already been said, just make the point that the program for. Uh, bring avoids back into service was directly hit by the fact that we had contractors employed as opposed to direct labour. When the contractors uh, went AWOL, it fell back to our own people to try and keep up um, the, the uh, repairs or the voids, bring the voids back into use. And as we can see over the summer, there's hundreds of houses across the administrative area, which haven't been brought back into service simply because we had to wait for public procurement rules to kick in to uh, engage new contractors under a new framework. So I think it's a very good example of how the lack of directly employed labour affected the, uh, the housing issue at the moment. Good morning, good. Good morning, good. Uh, Councillor Boylan. I just want to obviously support Kathleen's motion and commend her for bringing it to, um, to the attention of the Council. And the reason that I'm supporting this is because it's absolutely it's, it's maddening to me um, that we would be looking to subcontract out work that we should be um, doing ourselves, looking over ourselves and making sure that it's getting done. I know for a fact, and I have this on great authority, that some of the road maintenance works that's carried out by the subcontractors has to be then re-carried out by the people who work in that section. Equally, um, it, it happens in maintenance as well, when subcontractors go in to gut a house, um, go and get it back up to scratch, um, a snag list is, is done, and then it, it, it's, it's more than likely uh, DCC people who are coming back out to fix the snags as well. So I think the, the, the motion speaks for itself. I 100% support it. We should be, of course, increasing our um, workforce and not heavily relying on subcontracting out all of the work. Just briefly, just a, a, I think it's a great motion. I just, it's, a, it's a pity it doesn't go far, further and look at cleaning staff and other, other grades of staff within the organisation as well, who I think deserve a fair shakedown as well. Good Final speaker, Councillor McVeigh. Thanks, Arvara. Um, I uh, very much commend Councillor Carney Bood for bringing this motion, and I'm looking forward to the manager's response. I sincerely hope this is something that's already in train. Um, I remember once asking why it was the case that we had so many contractors instead of direct labour in the council, and the response I received was that because we didn't have to pay holiday pay and sick pay. Um, so, uh, you know, and I think we've, we've seen like the discussion that we had earlier on about uh, whether or not we employ people who uh, abide by uh, decent employment rights. So this, this is again a reflection of the policies that we should be sticking to as a council. And most recently we've seen also the, the impact of uh, the collapse of MYD on lots of different projects around the city, but in particular those that affect uh, council housing. So again reinforcing the need for us to have our own direct labour, uh, which makes perfect sense. And to top it all off, we also get to increase uh, the skills and capacity among young people, which again we'd be cried that there aren't enough of in the, in the, in the construction sector. And that's another reason given as to why we can't have uh, construction of housing. So fair play, Carney Boot, and I hope this goes through. Am I going to let the Chief Executive in? Well, Lord Mayor, I just want to assure the Council members that there is no policy to privatise the workforce, and we continue to deliver services through a combination of direct labour and the use of contractors. Uh, last week I attended an induction training course for the 20 new apprentices that we have just recruited, 
That would be the first apprentice we've recruited in 10 years. And the, most, the bulk of those are being allocated to housing maintenance. And it's our intention to build on that programme. Um, I get this every time this comes up, I get these stories about poor performance of contractors. And I keep on saying, if people refer those to me, I'll get them investigated. But making you know, claims like this, I never get any follow-up. I'd like those details. But get me the details, I'd be very happy to follow up. I believe a judicious combination of contractors and direct labour. We are investing heavily in direct labour. We're about to spend 35 million on a new integrated depot for our north side. So there's a huge investment in direct labour. And for the first time, we are expanding our direct labour force. You know, we're expanding in particularly housing maintenance and in street cleaning. Uh, and in other areas, the intention is to, to, to expand. So, um, you know, as I said, I've just attended an induction course for 20 new apprentices, the first time in 10 years. So we are making progress in addressing the issues raised by by councillors. I'm all good, Councillor Carney Bud. Uh, it's coming up to half nine. Do you want us just to put this to a vote? Yeah. I'm all good. Okay. Can we just agree? But can I just say, uh, and as a point, just you to can. finish off, I would still like that report um, about the, the cost-benefit analysis of, of use of subcontractors. Thank you.